and so on and so forth. So, and this COMPT uh, SNP and energy intake uh, regulates BP, blood pressure, was uh, first uh, uh, reported by uh, Nechi Tun, who is a uh, uh, student from Myanmar to our laboratory. I'll give you only one, uh, one or uh, two or three slides on the, uh, uh, the actual uh, data that we created. <clears throat> and this is about genetic risk score and hypertension. Uh, there are at least, at, at this time, at this, at this uh, study, that time when this study was done, there were 12 genes that was known to be uh, that account for uh, hypertension susceptibility. We just uh, made a genetic risk score indicating that uh, counting the risk are real numbers. So there are 12, 12 SNPs, so if you have all uh, risk areals, the point is 24. If you have all non-risk scores, the point is zero. So what is uh, the person's uh, blood pressure according to the risk scores? <clears throat> so this is a little, a little bit faint. But this is 8.9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the person has usually uh, 12 points. And this is the distribution of the patients. And this is the highest patient who has 18 or more. And if you see that, as the point of the risk, number of the risk areal increases, the main blood pressure goes up like that. And those who have more than 18 points, you have the highest. Also, the prevalence for the hypertension can be said for the, uh, it increases in uh, uh, <clears throat> increasing manner of the uh, genetic risk score. So it, it means that <clears throat> if you have uh, more risk SNP, you are more susceptible to hypertension. <clears throat> this is about diabetes, and uh, we can, <clears throat> uh, this is about diabetes, and we checked for five DM risk SNPs, and this time it's HbA1c. You can see a a very a gradual uh, increase by the number of risk areals. And then we wanted to know whether this has something to do with environmental factors. So we checked for these persons if there is a, if the energy intake, how, how much they eat will affect, will be affected by uh, the genetic makeups. <clears throat> So in this slide, <clears throat> we checked the gene named CDCAR1. Nobody knows, I don't know either, but this, is an, this seems to be an important gene uh, after the discovery by GVAS. <clears throat> and uh, in this cohort, we took uh, the uh, caloric intake by uh, food frequency questionnaire, FFQ, this comprised about 700 people. So, and we genotype all of them, and these are, the blue ones are for the non-risk type, and the purple one is for the risk type. We stratify them according to the caloric intake. So these are the low intake guys, less than 106, uh, <coughs> 1600 kilocalories, these are the middle ones, and these are the high ones, eating more than 2,000. So as for those who have low and middle energy intake, the HbA1c level is almost the same between the risk type and non-risk type. But once they eat 2,000 kilocalories or more, the risk type people get higher uh, HbA1c level than the non-risk type. So this kind of uh, phenomena, we call it uh, gene-environment uh, interaction. This is a good news, since even if you have a risk type gene, uh, if you keep your uh, caloric intake low, 
you will not develop diabetes. And this 